Jerusalem. When I think of Jerusalem, when you suggested uh, to me that we should talk about Jerusalem, I thought um, uh, a couple of scriptures came to mind. Uh, one was uh, Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 5, uh, which says, Thus says the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set her at the center of the nations with lands all around her. The center of the nations. Also, of course, uh, Psalm chapter 137, verses 5 and 6. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my hand... Can you hear my dog talking to me? Can you hear yeah. that? The dog doesn't like the show. <laughs> <so it's laughs> she, she doesn't approve already. Yeah. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my... No, right the dog is angry because the dog can't go on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is saying, shut up, I can't go. Okay, you have to rub it in. That's what's going on. It's definitely what's going on. I'm not bringing my dog. And if you're thinking about bringing your dog, it's not happening. There's no yeah. dogs on the bus. All right. If I forget you, O Jerusalem... You're not coming. If I forget yeah. you, O Jerusalem, <laughs> let my right hand forget its skill. Uh, if, I do not, if I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. What comes to your mind, Tobia, first of all? When, when I think of Jerusalem, I, I'm a much more spiritual person than you. I think of... of Falafel. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's not true. You think of Burgers <laughs> Bar, right? That's what you think of. I I'm in Indonesia, so don't yell at me. I can't get kosher food here. So I, I've like been eating fish for six months, right. so this is going to help. Uh, when I think of Jerusalem, I think of Psalm 125. Mm -hmm. I think that Jerusalem is compared to the children of Israel. Uh, from the very birth of the children of Israel. I think most of the people watching this show think of Jerusalem and think of the temple. And in fact, Judaism in many ways was born in Jerusalem, and in particular the Temple Mount. It's, it is on Mount Moriah, the very mountain that, uh, that, uh, that the temple was built on that long before King, King Solomon built the temple, Abraham... The, our forefather of blessed memory, uh, it was there that he brought his son Isaac for his sacrifice as a demonstration of his faith in Genesis 22. That's what I think about. I think about the Jewish tradition that it was Isaac too, that when he went out to pray during the afternoon, he went out in the field that was on Mount Moriah and Jacob in the evening when he had the dream, the perhaps arguably the most ecstatic dream in all of Tanakh, and, and it's that holy place that he had in view. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I think of Jerusalem. I think of the connection of Jerusalem, and this is what we're going to explore, and I, I say this to you straight away, guys. If, um, if, if you are interested in going to a casino in Jericho, this is not the right tour for you, <laughs> and if you want to snorkel in, in Tel Aviv, this is not the one. If, on the other hand, you want to walk in the footsteps of the prophets and and uh, tour and see the places and feel the places and experiences the places where virtually all of Scripture was written, aside from the five books of Moses, uh, you'd want to join us. I think about Jerusalem as so deeply connected to the Jewish people that the prophet David, the king of blessed memory in Psalm 125, verse 2, compares Jerusalem to the children of Israel and God's protection of the Jewish people as the mountains surround Jerusalem, mm. so yeah. do I surround my people. Uh, that's what I, what I think about in Jeru Jerusalem. I think about the Messianic age in Jerusalem. I, I want to just share this point, if I may, about Yushalayim. Um, Yushalayim is um, one of Israel's uh, largest cities uh, geographically. Certainly, uh, but what's what's important to know, which I think many people miss, is they know that there's the old city, mm -hmm. uh, the walled city, and then mm -hmm. there's all everything else. Well, part of the tour we're going to on Sabbath, we're, we're going to take a walking tour throughout tour throughout the old city. For many people, that's the favorite part of the tour. Mm -hmm. um, and if you'll ask me what's my favorite part of the tour, I have no idea. And when I when last year when I asked people what they, they didn't even know it's because there's so many parts that just stay with you, remain with you for life. But coming to the Western Wall on Friday evening mm. and watching thousands of people from 
every part of the world gather to the only place that's the holy city for the world and and praying there and welcoming the sabbath mm. in the in in front of the western wall with thousands of jews and many christians and people from just all over the world and then we walk back it's a short very comfortable walk back to the our, our really beautiful hotel and a meal you'll forget about it but it's it's very powerful and i want to share this thought with you i mean if you could recall anything that i share with you now because this is what our whole tour is about mm. our tour is not us sitting there and just you know i'm going to take you somewhere and put you in front of it it's about understanding the depth of history what it means to us spiritually and historically and how jerusalem shaped us into a nation uh, you know on on, on a on a superficial level, you could look at the Western Wall uh, in a sense as a, as a tragedy. I mean, at the first glance at the Western Wall does not elicit that feeling among anyone that I have ever met. People are just stunned. I, I remember last year our tour, so many of the people, some of the people who had never been to Israel in their lives, when they came to Jerusalem, it's like they saw their beloved for the first time. Mm. They just stood there in absolute shock, mm. just standing there, um, gazing upon their beloved. But the question is, why does the Western Wall, why does the Temple Mount, why does the Western Wall elicit such profound feeling uh, among folks who come there from every background, from everywhere. Everyone's drawn to that place. And th the reason is that at, at first glance, superficially, one might say, Western Wall. That's a tragedy. That's a, that's a relic or a remnant of, of the destruction of the Second Temple, of what the Romans destroyed mm -hmm. in, in 70, and they could not destroy the, the wall, um, you could give the physical reason, it was the stones there, as you'll see on, on the tour, I hope you will join us, are uh, the largest stones ever used in construction anywhere in the world. Uh, the largest stone is 600 tons. It's astounding. But it is, in a sense, superficially, a, a relic of something that was destroyed. It should only elicit very sad feelings, but it doesn't. And here's the point, and this is what the whole, if, if you want to know what the tour is about, it's not just um, g visiting and seeing and gazing upon uh, places, but it's really moving into these places historically. Mm. Bear in mind and listen really like you've never listened in your life. The Western Wall, it's true, it remains, and it was never destroyed. As our sages tell us, it never would be destroyed. The Romans couldn't destroy it. It remains there to this day. And it's the place where millions of people from all over the world come to pray. But bear in mind that the Western Wall is not only, um, is not only an image of the past. It's a moving portrait of the future. Please God, we will welcome the Messiah quickly in our time. When the Messiah comes, we have nine chapters in Scripture, more than that, but at the end of Ezekiel, that described the building mm. of the final temple. Yep. The western wall is not only the last surviving wall of the second temple that was built by Herod. They're not going to throw it down and build a new one in the Messianic age. Rather, the western wall is the first wall of the Messianic temple. So that's why it elicits such, such power to the future. Of course, we, we will examine some of the destruction of the past, but mm. the, what Jerusalem does to everyone, why it's so up deeply uplifting is you're looking at the first wall of the third messianic temple. Mm. Uh, so therefore, it's, a, it's looking at the future. It's seeing that God's glory has never completely departed. It has remained there. And that's why it draws folks from all over the world. And it's deeply meaningful. What we're going to do and what we do in this very unique tour is we're going deeper. We're going deeper because, as it turns out, the original old city of Yushalayim began, is, was much further south. 
the original old city, or the original walled city of Yishalayim, extended into the city of David, which is, without a question, aside from the Temple Mount, is the most is the area that is most rich in archaeology. That's where King David's palace is. When you open the the newspapers, you go online and you read about the new discoverers, seals of the kings, right out of the Bible, personalities, so come alive through discoveries, uh, it is almost always, with few exceptions, in the city of David. When King David stood as the nation was fighting down in what is today um, Moab, and he was on the rooftop, and from a distance he can see Bathsheba, we will show you where he was almost certainly mm-hmm. standing. Um, that's where his palace was. We're going to walk there. Well, walking through the footsteps of scriptures of the prophets, we're actually going to go down deep into Jerusalem into the city of David. There in the city of David, according to Jewish tradition, we have the pit where Jeremiah was thrown into, Mm -hmm. nearly killed for the prophecies that he gave. Um, Jeremiah famously refers to Jerusalem, says, it will be called the Lord our righteousness. Mm. I mean, not because Jerusalem itself, of course, is God. It means that God's glory and Shekhinah is reflected there. We're going to go so deep down into the bedrock of Jerusalem we're going to see the um, the Shiloach that 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 moves gently across the Temple Mount, moving south. That Isaiah speaks about in chapter eight, verse five and six, and so it's a startling place. It's the the place where King Solomon was anointed. We're going to see walls that may have been the walls where Melchizedek anointed uh, Abraham according to tradition, mm-hmm. and we make that distinction. So the city of David is is rich. I mean, I, I <laughs> we my uh, we'd run about out of electricity before we'd start talking <laughs> about it. There's, so there's it. Hezek- so let me tell you key. this: is Hezekiah's tunnel. You've done Hezekiah's tunnel once before. You know, one of the first recordings that you and I ever did, you talked about Hezekiah's tunnel. And uh, and you said to me, you know, you could do Hezekiah's tunnel. It's not too, uh, it's not you, you're tall, but it's all right. <laughs> Maybe there's a couple of places you have to bend down, but you'll be all right. I'm never going in there ever again. I'm six foot five. I almost broke my back, doubled over trying to get through this thing. You, wait, be quiet. I got to handle this. Stuff. No, what, it's I, your I'm fault. I'm not the doing first it. Time, the first time I met Jono, so this goes like years ago, we met in Jerusalem, and I'll never forget this. Now, he had been a very big fan of mine for years. Oh, yeah. He was dying to meet me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but we met in, in, uh, in, in, a great, in, in, a, in a great hotel in Yerushalayim, and we actually took pictures next to each other. The guy is, in Yiddish, called a long election. He's 6'5", <laughs> 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, 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 I don't know what he is. He's a huge noodle. Anyway, so somebody took a picture of him and I sitting next to each other. And then people really, after they met me, they went, oh, so you're not a midget. Uh, <laughs> people thought I was like a, a midget or something, and they just were like quiet. The guy is like really tall. So uh, I'm just, you know, okay. So uh, oh, You're, you're so, just okay. So when you walk yeah. through Hezekiah's Tunnel, it's absolutely fine. And if yeah. you're under six foot and maybe if you're about five and a half feet you're not going to have a problem it's an it's an incredible experience to go through there and uh if you're not as tall as i am then i would highly recommend it um but i'm never doing you, that again you don't have to bring your bathing suit you do it is required bring your bible because that's what yeah, we're that's going it. to i mean that essentially no point in doing a tour now but we are going to delve into scripture we're going to walk you know, when, when you when you think of the Western world, I, I of course, you know, I, I know what you're thinking about. You think about a area that's 180 feet wide, and that's what goes through your mind. Mm. But as it turns out, the um, uh, the entire length of the Western Wall is not 180 feet or 60 meters. That means what's visible, but uh, rather it's uh, roughly 1,600 feet. We're going to be moving right through there in a 
Hope you join us for that. We're, we get so close to the Holy of Holies, it's extraordinary. So, you know, that's what Jerusalem is about. Jerusalem is about the history of the Jewish people, a, a, a divine presence that never departed. We'll be taking a walking tour throughout the, the old city of Jerusalem on Shabbat afternoon, which is really exciting. Uh, we'll see there the uh, the very walls that were are mentioned in the Bible, and uh, I don't think we should give away much more on that. The city of God, uh, Psalm 87, uh, should we end with this? I'm going to read it. It says, uh, his foundations, uh, his foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God, Selah. Hmm. Yeah. You know, as it turns out, I'll, I'll just say this. The world today is not going crazy over Sao Paulo, uh, beautiful San Francisco. The whole world's focus is on Jerusalem, mm. just like the Bible said. I hope you will join Jano, I, a great team uh, in the Holy Land as we tour not just Jerusalem, but even the birthplace of the Jewish people, Hebron, will talk about that on mm -hmm. another show and many other spec it, it means walking through the bible um walking in the footsteps of the prophets and hope you will join us john or just uh, tell the the viewers um about if they want to find out how they can do that again there'll be a, a link under this video the website is truth to you dot org that's truth number two letter you dot org and you'll see a link there on the Israel tour. Just click that and we'll give you all the details where you can leave a deposit and secure your place with us this November in the Holy Land. We look forward to seeing you and we hope that you uh, join us. Um, we're going to be talking about other tour topics in the future. But until then, thank you for your company. Shalom. <laughs>